Elena! Hi, Dad. Sorry about the wait. Uh, it was an important call. Highly classified. Lot of work, lot of work. Many irons in fire. Marvel has had a pretty bad time with Phase 4 and now Phase 5 of the MCU. I guess this is what happens when you go into the next set of phases without a cohesive plan. Sure, Deadpool and Wolverine was a diamond in the rough, but it doesn't mean jack squat until we start to see genuine change. As was reported by Chris Gore, Kevin Feige has allegedly cleaned house over at Marvel Studios. So we're all waiting with bated breath to see what's next. And this week, the first Thunderbolt trailer dropped. What even is this? And will it be any good? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the raging dumpster fire that is Disney's Marvel. Before we dive in, take a moment to like and subscribe if just a fraction of the 95% of you who watch but haven't subscribed yet, hit that button. It would make a huge difference in helping the channel grow. And the best part is, subscribing is completely free. Back in the day, I used to collect comics like nobody's business. It started with the tragically underrated and very fun Ninja Turtle run by Archie and evolved into collecting Spider-Man, X-Men, the Fantastic Four, and many, many others. The 90s truly were a great time to be alive. But then I started growing up and girls began to supplant comics, so I pretty much stopped reading and collecting comics. But I stopped right after the Onslaught storyline and the subsequent Heroes Reborn, Heroes Return, and Operation Zero Tolerance story threads. This actually happened to be right around the time Marvel Comics introduced the Thunderbolts. I even have Thunderbolts number one. The Thunderbolts burst onto the scene as the Marvel Universe's shiny new heroes, stepping up to protect the world after the Avengers were conveniently declared dead following the 1996 Onslaught crossover that I mentioned. But just when readers thought they were in for a fresh start, the final page of their debut issue dropped a little twist. The Thunderbolts were actually the masters of evil in a clever disguise. Marvel really nailed that surprise, didn't they, in the MCU? Yeah, that's about the time I walked away, as Blink-182 would say. But this actually may not be that bad. Hear me out. The MCU has no shortage of minor and forgettable villains in its rogues gallery. In fact, it's littered with mediocre villains. Florence Pew Pew's Discount Black Widow, David Harbour's Alexi, Wyatt Russell's John Walker, and Elaine from Seinfeld even. You name it. As many critics, including the Critical Drinker and Nerd Roddick have mentioned, Marvel Studios has had a problem with its villains, and the way they're written. So what better way to fix the problem than to throw all the mediocrity into one movie? Take a guess. I don't know, you tell me. All right. You think we just warehouse it on the books? No, we just repackage it with a bunch of other shit that didn't sell and put it into a CDO. A CDO? Yes, a CDO. What is that? This is where we take a bunch of Bs, double Bs, and triple Bs that haven't sold, and we put them in a pile. And when the pile gets large enough, the whole thing is suddenly considered diversified. And then the whores at the rating agency give it a 92, 93% AAA rating. No questions asked. Yeah, wow, I guess history does repeat itself. Like in real life with failed mortgage pools, combining failed and mediocre villains into one package may not be the best use of resources. Essentially, no one saw Black Widow to know Florence Pew Pew's and David Harbour's characters. The Black Widow movie wasn't widely released for a considerable amount of time, like all the other MCU movies. It was also released during the pandemic when absolutely no one was going into movie theaters. And it also utilized characters from Disney+, Plus, shows that no one watched. On top of all that, it took place before Avengers Endgame, but released afterwards, in a move that confused a lot of normie audiences. Didn't Black Widow die? Yeah, you know what I'm getting at. Rather than figuring out how to make a compelling villain who is fun, like say, Cassandra Nova in Deadpool and Wolverine, the writers and producers decided to go back to the dry well and give their failures one more chance. Could a movie like that work? Well, maybe. If the characters were popular, then it could possibly work. But we're talking about characters that no one really gave a shit about in the first place. 
in the comics or in the movies. So to expect audiences to show up for characters like that is the height of... Sheer fucking hubris. Who knows? Only time will tell whether Thunderbolts will be any good. After all, they could pull off a Captain America and the Winter Soldier and provide a decent spy thriller. But what do you guys think about all this? Do you think combining mediocre and forgettable villains into their own movie will work? And where does Marvel go from here? Please do let me know down below in the comments, and as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Okie dokie.